It's debunking time again, folks, because as much as we'd all like to be living through the plot of Contact and discovering alien signatures, we're not. Yet. Anyway. Nope, because this month we've seen another astronomy result twisted from this research paper reporting coherent radio signals from a star that also happens to have a planet to stories like this, claiming that this signal is being sent from the planet itself and that it's a big step forward in the hunt for extraterrestrial life. <laughs> Now I can 100% see how this has happened because a lot of these statements are true in isolation but not linked together in that way to make that very big jump to aliens. So let's chat about what the authors of this research paper, Pineda and Villardson, have actually found. Now they were studying the star YZ Ceti, a red dwarf star, a star which is much cooler and fainter than the sun that's around about 12 light years away. And it's known to have three planets orbiting around it with possibly a fourth as well, which makes it a really good candidate to test whether these planets have magnetic fields or not. The Earth, for example, has a magnetic field which helps to shield us from all the high energy radiation that's burped off by the sun. It protects life here on Earth and gives us the beautiful displays of the northern lights, the aurora, where these high energy particles are actually funneled down to the poles and cause elements in our atmosphere to glow, these beautiful green and red colours. Mars, however, does not have a magnetic field. So over the past four and a half billion years or so of the solar system's lifetime, it has been bombarded by all this radiation from the sun and slowly had its atmosphere stripped away. This is why we think Mars might have been habitable in the past and why it might have had liquid water on its surface, but not anymore. Hence all the searches for life on Mars with the likes of the Perseverance rover. So whether a planet has a magnetic field or not is going to be a really important factor when we're considering like the search for life beyond Earth and habitable planets. Now we've actually detected magnetic fields around gas giant exoplanets before. So planets like Jupiter in our own solar system were orbiting other stars, but we've never found a rocky Earth-like exoplanet with a magnetic field orbiting another star yet. And the reason for that is it's really difficult to find out if a planet at a great distance has a magnetic field. It's not something that you can observe directly, but you can infer that it's there. If you have a planet orbiting very close in to its star with a magnetic field, then any of that radiation that's burped up by the star, just like the sun does, that planet's magnetic field is going to interact with all that material, essentially plow through it and push it off in different directions. In some cases, push it back towards the star, where it then interacts with the star's magnetic field again and can get funneled down to the star's poles and form an aurora there which will glow, not in visible light that we see with our eyes like our aurora on Earth, but instead with radio waves. Light with very long wavelengths or low frequencies. We have actually seen this before with Jupiter and its moon Io. So not a planet in orbit around a star, but a moon in orbit around a planet. Part of Jupiter's aurora is actually caused by Io's magnetic field interacting with Jupiter's magnetic field. And that was first reported back in 1998. So we know it should be possible to find radio signals like this, it's just knowing where to look. Best candidates are obviously uh, planets that we know exist that orbit very close into their stars, which is exactly what Pineda and Wildson did with the Very Large Array, the VLA, a radio telescope in New Mexico. Yes, the very same one that was used in the film Contact. I've actually done like an Astrophysicist Reacts video to the film Contact if you want to check that out. Obviously the main difference here is that with a radio telescope you're detecting light, not sound. You can sonify that if you really want to, to listen to your data, but it's very hard to pick up any signals. So instead, what have Pineda and Villardson actually found here? Well, they found coherent radio bursts from YZ SETI that coincide with its innermost planet's two-day orbit. Coherent essentially means that the light you're detecting is all coming at the same frequency or wavelength and sometimes even the same polarization as well. So lasers are a really good example of coherent light, all at the same wavelength and therefore the same color. It's exactly what you'd expect to see with this plasma interacting with the magnetic field of the star to give you this 
aurora on the star. It's the same thing we see on Earth, right? We get a coherent light source from the aurora. It's always the exact same color of green from oxygen in the atmosphere and always the exact same color of red from nitrogen in the atmosphere. So that also is a coherent light source. Same as what's going on here, except instead of visible light, we're seeing it with radio wavelengths of light instead. It's a really exciting result for exoplanet studies because these planets that orbit really close in to red dwarf stars might sound like they're in a hellish place you're know, orbiting every two days, but actually, because red dwarf stars are really cool and faint, like way cooler and fainter than the sun is, their habitable zone, so the region that you'd have the temperatures that would be right to support liquid water and therefore at least life as we know it, they're really close into the star. So you can have a planet on a very short, you know, days sort of length of orbit and still be in the habitable zone. So the fact that we've also detected a magnetic field around such a planet as well, and we know that magnetic fields seem to be this sort of ingredient that you need in the recipe for habitability of a planet, that's a very big step forward in terms of like, where do we search in the future for habitable planets, for these biosignatures that perhaps will suggest that life is present in the atmosphere of a planet. I've made a video before all about biosignatures and especially how JWST is gonna hunt for them in the atmospheres of planets if you wanna check that video out. So I think there are four true statements here off the back of this research. The first is that there's a coherent radio signal been detected from a star planet system. Second, that this radio signal has come from aurora that only exists because the planet has a magnetic field. Three, that a magnetic field seems to be really promising for the habitability of a planet, at least, you know, comparing like Earth and Mars in the solar system, at least. And then finally, number four is that if we could find more of these things, more of these planets orbiting close into their stars that have these coherent radio signals coming from them, that would be a big step forward for the search for life outside Earth. And it seems like what's happened is that there's just been this like massive game of telephone across the internet where whispers of this research have gotten so distorted that you've cut out all of this middle bit of context and just gone, coherent radio signal equals step forward in search for aliens. <sighs> And it has been immensely frustrating to watch this happen. So I hope you will forgive me this rant that has been disguised as an educational science video. And remember folks, don't believe everything that you see online. Before we get to the bloopers, I just wanna say a big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this week's video. If you find yourself wondering whether an article or a post that you've seen online is scientifically legit or not, but you didn't necessarily have the know-how to be able to tell, then Brilliant.org can help you gain the skills and background knowledge that you need. Brilliant is one of the best ways to learn science and maths interactively. Their visual hands-on approach is so engaging and it makes it a really effective way to learn learn something new. You're not just memorizing formulae or equations, Brilliant is building your intuition. So I think their scientific thinking course is perfect for this. It really gets you thinking analytically about problems and then you can apply those problem solving skills that you learn to your everyday life. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky or you can click on that link in the video description down below and the first 200 of you are we're also going to get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, roll those bloopers. And then it's a big step forward in the hunt for extraterrestrial life. <laughs> I think my um, screams need to be a little bit more low pitched, otherwise it's just like... <laughs> That'll do. Oh, that's enough for poking my head into a pillow for one day. <laughs> oh, it's a good job I've got this tea. My voice is all awesome up for that. <sighs> I say tea. It's not tea. It's squash. We all know it's squash. All right, where are we going next? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention, Becky. Shoot me down. 
but I won't fall. It's never aliens. I feel like us scientists have said it's never aliens like so many times now that everyone, we just kind of trained them to be like so skepti skep skeptical <laughs> that if it ever is aliens, everyone's gonna be really skeptical and no one's gonna believe us. <laughs> oh, problem to be in.